Human performance is documented as the accomplishment of a task in accordance with an agreed upon standard of accuracy, completeness, and efficiency. With me today, <laughs> Dr. Craig Duncan to talk about what wins a game. And, you know, I want to talk about the human performance side. You in? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Let's chat. Mate, last time you were on, you said that uh, the protein balls were your favorite product. What is it now? <laughs> the protein balls. Are so, and I've got them right here. <laughs> uh, the birthday cake flavor. Still your flavor? Uh, but look, uh, I've always been a, a big supporter of the green tea. Yeah, you, you like know, you know, do you know like I the love green that. tea, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And I really like the shred. Not for the shred reasons, but I, I find it as a as you a good fast, so you love you love the, the energy. Yeah, I like it. It, it gives me a good pickup and gets my mind centered right. It's nice and smooth. Nice. And I really like it. I better stop there or people will think I'm paying for comment. <laughs> 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 Let's go. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. Today's podcast is brought to you by BCEAA Ultra, our new all-in-one BCAA and DAA elite amino formula. This cutting-edge formula provides you with the building blocks for lean muscle gain and helps you work through even the most brutal training session. Not just a BCAA supplement, BCEAA Ultra delivers a full spectrum of essential amino acids in effective doses and is 100% vegan friendly. With a massive 5 grams of BCAAs and 7 grams of EAAs plus added L-glutamine, BCEAA Ultra is your weapon for lean muscle repair and maintenance, helping you recover faster from those punishing workouts. If you've played elite sport, you've probably chatted with this man. We're at Body Science, the house of fit, happy, and healthy. And with me, Dr. Craig Duncan. How are you, mate? I'm good, Greg. How are you? Good. I've thrown a big one at you this week. I want to talk about what wins you a game because I was having a chat with you about another topic and Mm. you mentioned that concept to me in passing. And I thought, this is a good one. What wins you a game? And I'm not talking about coaching and that i want to talk about in performance departments Mm, that's a i mean it's a really big question and it's hard to generalize and it's across sports but from my perspective of the work i do the best thing or what i need to do and what we're paid to do is to make sure that the coach has the team in a physiological psychological condition so it can complete the tactics that they want so before we jump into what that means like having everything where you need it let's talk about your history a bit of history about what you've done so Mm -hmm. people know that we're talking with someone who who's actually qualified to talk about this. Yeah, I suppose if we if we take it back, I my academic studies are in, in sports science and mm-hmm. with a, a bachelor's in human movement science and then did my doctorate in sports science from the University of Sydney. And then I went on and studied some psychology after I finished my doctorate and then worked in the field. So I, even though I have an academic position, I like to still be very applied. And so I've been in the field for about 20 years now. So primarily working in football and soccer Mm -hmm. And from Sydney FC to Western Sydney Wanderers, Brisbane Raw, uh, and then the Australian national team. I did the last World Cup with them. The Iran national team, we did the Asian Cup with them in in 2019. And then I've also been with the New South Wales State of Origin, Canterbury Bulldogs, done some work with St. George as well, and then now with Manly. Manly. So They're having a good year too, mate, so hold your head high on that one. Yeah, we always... uh, we always like it when our teams do well. So if you were to walk into a group of people that you work with and go, what wins a game? And we're talking the him performance side of things. Yeah. What what type of face would you have look at you and what type of expectation would you expect to come out of that conversation? Well, first, you know, in, in anything we do, we have to analyze the situation and analyze if, you know, if we're starting at a new club or, you know, a new organization and with a new team, we've got to look at how previously they, they went. What are what are all the things? I mean, if we, if we take it right back to basics, you know, what is involved? in the sport that you're working in you've got to analyze the sport you know what are the movement patterns that are involved what components of fitness are important for that sport so you do an analysis of the activity and then you work from the analysis of the activity then you identify what you need to analyze for that player or that athlete to be successful in that activity and analyze that and and then determine where the weaknesses are and where we need to work from to to get them ready to play any are you getting directives from coaching staff in relation to that or are you giving directives back towards coaching staff well, look, I'm one that's very collaborative, and I think at the end of the end of the day, my the the one I have to serve is the coach. Mm-hmm. So it's very important in in my work that you actually meet with the coach, interview the coach, and see what they what they want to achieve and what they need from from us. So this is a problem often in 
in human performance or in high performance departments is that they go off on a tangent and run run in their own silo without really servicing who they're meant to and that's the coach and the players so i'm very much about okay well what what does the coach require <clears throat> what how tactically do they want to play so it depends on the sport you know you you might be playing a you know a game tactically that involves certain physiological components so then we need to work towards that so it's it's a fundamental conversation to have with the and how much input are you having on a week-to-week basis with coaching staff versus athlete it depends it depends where where i'm at and in what position if i'm consulting or if i'm actually working on the ground but but the the human performance departments have a, a strong relationship with the with the players they're normally the first you know the closest relationship because we're about maximizing their performance and definitely the director of 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 the department should have very much you know daily conversation even more you know with the coaching staff so there needs to be a system in place of communication and how that is done that's very very important but yeah it's a it's an ongoing discussion so what have you guys changed at manly this year i mean they're having a great season Mm. well i think the the first part i mean that has to be credit to the players and you're working with an outstanding coach there in in des hasler who is is a joy joy to work with and then when des came in he implemented the high performance manager that is donnie singe who again Again, uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with at other clubs and he's outstanding because he has a, a real mentality to be better and that's really important. And then along came the head of physio, James Rame, and the head of sports science, Mark Booth. So we, there were some changes that were made in that. And then there was staff that was already there that have, have been very positive. So I think coming in in that department, often it's not tactical. If I talk human performance tactics, you know, like about what we what we do, it's about how we do it and it's about having the strategy and the systems and and how we work towards things so i i've seen a lot of places where they don't have a mindset about being better they have a mindset about focusing on proving that they are right yeah okay so i don't work like that if an injury happens or, or something happens then we will turn over every possible stone we will take responsibility for that and to ensure it doesn't happen again if if we can we have to look at ourselves every day and focus on continuous improvement and that's about leaving the ego at the door, having robust conversations, but we're about being better. I, I'm there to serve the players and serve the coach and serve the franchise. That's what it's about, not serve Craig Duncan. And I think we need to be aware of that because too often in my industry, I think yeah, people just want to be right without really facing the mirror every day about getting it right. And how do you get to the position where you can, and is the correct word here, the director of human performance? Is that mm. the type of role we're talking about right yeah, now? Yeah, that's what... Donny yep. uh, Donny Singe is at, at uh, Manly, where you know I I act as a consultant there. You're a consultant. There. So how do you get to that level of expertise and that understanding of how a human works mm. in your journey? Because you you had a very your journey was definitely through the university structures. Yeah. yeah. And you've obviously done a lot of great PH, PhD work and yep. things like that that have driven you in this area. Yeah. What What was it that made you go to that part where you can actually sit back and consult back to companies now that have Donny Singes and the directors of him performance? And obviously, the coach at Manly is very forward thinking, and he's into what's new. Yep. And he, you know, we we all know Des is he'll he'll listen to anything that's a great idea. Yes. So how do you work with these guys? Get to that role where you can actually go, Des, that's a stupid idea, or Donny, <laughs> we need to do this. Like to to have the ability to do that at that level. And you are talking to guys who are very established. You have got a coach who's yep. extremely established and proven. You've got Donny who's extremely proven with national teams and premierships yep. and things. Like, how do you get in the middle of that and work with that? Wow, well, I think that's that's basically emotional intelligence mm. and and having a real I don't want to say it but a growth mindset mm. I, I have never been comfortable with what we do and and uh, you know I always want to want to do better and I think what happened is okay we have the the work we do on the ground the day-to-day work and we could go around to every club in Australia and they'll be doing very similar things though they'll, they'll do monitoring they plan training they implement training but it's about sitting back and, and looking at it from a perspective of having a systems attitude you know putting systems in place and working on the strategy so i think as a consultant you have time to sit back and see things from the big picture and see everyone's point of point of view and i don't think there's you know you said oh how do i tell people if they've got a bad idea i, I don't tell it instantly there's no bad ideas yeah no absolutely i've got to sit back there's and no value and take the time to to analyze that and it's it's just the process i go through i 
I don't think I, I, I'm open and, and I like to read a lot and from different areas. So just not from sports science. I think if you're listening to this and you're a sports scientist and all you read is about sports science, that's going to be a problem. You know, I get uh, a lot of my ideas and that from other areas and, and other domains. And I think that's enhanced the situation. But it's about being open and it's about having good communication strategy and good communication structure into what you're doing and, and have values as an organization. This is what you want to do. And um, I'm not interested in working with anyone that doesn't want to progress and knows their place in the whole scenario. I know, like at Manly, ultimately Des Hasler is is the boss there. Yeah, also Wherever I work, yeah. the, the coach is the boss. We're a small percentage of that puzzle to give him. I like to see it that, that the coach, I think of them as like the artist, okay? And the and the artist to to create the the picture. We have to give them good brushes and the brushes of the players so he can he can create that. They they're doing the work, the coaches and the players. Ours is just to make sure that they can do what they're required to do. So so when you when you could you run a business that consults to several elite teams? Yes, and yes. I do. Yeah. So you're, so, in, you're in football. Yeah. So our our company it is quite unique. Uh, a number of years ago, I could see that our systems and strategy could make a real difference uh, across the board, and and just the attitude that we we have, and so we started our company performance intelligence agency which and PIA the focus of that is it's there's multi focuses but the real thing is that we can supply staff they train under our systems and it's implemented and yes we can work across multiple codes and even have uh, a number of teams in the same competition mm, which is unique and uh, uh, there are people that struggle with that however we see it as well you know, if you if you want to do the best possibly you can be, it's a it's a good way to have because you have everyone on the same page. Yeah. So in relation to your IP being your systems and strategies, yeah. you picked up over all the sports and stuff you've yep. mm. So just touching on your systems and strategy, you talked about that's your IP you bring to a team and you work with the coach and you work together. Mm. Which sports have played heavily in systems and strategy in the early years to now? I mean, all, all teams have great systems and strategies now and obviously for someone like you to come in you're not talking about last year's strategy or the year before it's what are the systems and strategies moving forward mm. which sports over the the last 10 years have given you that driver to actually be able to work in these areas to bring it to all sports now to, to talk to more people about to because you're very into sharing and you talk a lot about what you do it's, it's not like you hid your, no, your knowledge and you mm. under your arm and this is mine go away everyone else you're very open about what you do mm. what sports have were had the funds to do that in the early days with you well look i think afl was a, a world leader yep okay and they they had the funding to do that and they were the ones that really i suppose started the concept of having high performance managers and and large departments and i think there were some real leaders in that field i think darren burgess did a fantastic job in the work he's done he also works in football so mm -hmm. i i know him very well however in saying that i think it's individuals and and i don't know if all the systems and strategies in in today's sport are are actually as good as they possibly could be in the okay. high performance departments. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, I think we're we're good at the the sports science, the technical components, and we can all do things very very similar. How it's how we implement that and how we have that ongoing success about about doing that. I think it's I think that's the interesting component. And that, that is interesting you say that. Like, what metrics are you looking at that makes you different? Look, I don't think there's actually probably none. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, there's there's no Rocket it's science. Not a job interview, thank God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there's there's no rocket science to what we do. Yeah. Uh, however, I think we're very good at integrating it, and I think we're very very good at continuously wanting to improve. And I think that's our where our success has been, and also being open and understanding and working with the coach about what they want mm -hmm. and the organization what they want. Yes, we have algorithms and different indexes that are unique to you know our organization. However, it's not rocket science. However, you, you say that a lot. I hear, you, I hear you say that a lot, but it's there's a few rockets being launched there. Yeah, but I, I just think it's it's about how we implement it. Yeah. And, and I think we've been able to show it across multiple sports at multiple levels across multiple nations. And that's what's exciting to me. So you mentioned you did some work with Iran in the yes. Asia Cup. That yeah. must have been something very different to what you've ever done. It was fantastic opportunity because I... And they I, approached you, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And the coach of Iran is a, is a man called Carlos Kuros, was a man called uh, Carlos Kuros, who's now with the Colombian national team. And Carlos Kuros is a 
is a very well-known Portuguese coach that worked with Manchester United, Real Madrid. He was head coach of Real Madrid, the Portuguese national team. And it was just it was just a joy to work with him. Okay. If you talk about an artist and, and a coach, I, I have not seen a coach like him. And so it was very, very fortunate to have that opportunity and his staff. And it was it was wonderful. And with the uh, Iranian players. And it was it didn't end in the greatest success. We got knocked out in the semifinal and it would have been nice to win but that was further than that they'd gone in that competition mm-hmm. for over 20 years and it was a great experience so you're with a unique coach someone who you think is what do you call him a magician or oh what no, the word just, a, just an, an artist an you artist, know a very well you. educated man is extremely experienced with great humility and and drove everyone to to be at their best and so what what did you bring to win games with them what did you bring to that you've got a great coach yeah and a great uh, sports science team sports great science physios yeah great assistants i think being able to come in and they'd been working together for a while a significant amount of time just another voice and and another set of eyes and i i think if anything i i have a really holistic view of performance so it's about to sit back to analyze and to offer some insight into into different areas and and always when you offer insight it's whether the coach it's their decision whether they go with that or they don't go with that and and that's that's okay but i think that's what i had to offer did i make a difference i'm not i'm not sure i think they were they were very very good without me but uh, definitely having that other set of eyes an outside set of eyes can enhance the situation and mate with me metrics in him performance what type of things are you looking at for the players and the coach i assume you're what you talk about your in your him performance overview you're looking at the data coming back from the team you're not and you're not actually running the coach's stats you're not looking at him personally and driving him in no. the him performance area you're talking about the players yeah yeah we're talking about the players i mean there is some situations where i work closely with the coach just on on their their on performance and, and just to be there like, as who'd a, want to be a coach these days like seriously yeah. something goes wrong the coach gets blamed yeah a hundred percent and there's a there's a lot of them just about them managing their health as well yeah but over overriding i mean my view of performance you've got you've got it from a, this holistic perspective basically if we look at the equation of performance what is it 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 looks at the capacity what we have to offer and then but on the other side of that equation is okay we want to build the capacity we get players fitter we get them tactically better technically better but on the other side of the equation is what i term the noise the fatigue the pressure the stress everything that takes away from that so there's no point if we just work on that capacity side of the equation which i think is pretty easy i think we can get players fit if we're also raising their fatigue so that we get them injured so that is very important that we manage the noise side and we do that through our monitoring staying in tune it's like a process you know the what's the response to the training players train what's the response to the training did it meet our model so before training takes place a model is created for that session okay so we know what should happen in that session before they even go yep. on, on the field or on the court. They train that session. Did it meet the, the model? Yes, it met the model. Is the response, now we measure the response of the players the, the next day, how they, you know, where is their, their status? in respect to their well-being or what we term the noise and see if that met exactly where we thought it should be. And if that's okay, then we go again for that plan session. So I'm very agile in how I look at things. If changes need to be made to the training program, they're made that day or the okay. next day, yep. not three days later. And then we've succumbed to some form of injury or players aren't performing to their optimum. So it's staying in tune with the data on on every, every day. And how open-minded is elite sport to words like well-being and noise uh, look i think everyone does well-being monitoring i don't really like well-being as a term even though i just used it but yeah people uh have been doing that i i think and there wouldn't be probably a team in australia that doesn't monitor their players in some way professional team mm-hmm. however i do think a lot tick the box and they're not in tune with it at the end of the day you collect data to offer insight sports science sadly collects a lot of data and offers numbers it's about turning that numbers into insight so the coach can make informed decisions that's my job so we could from a training session it could be thousands of points of data from you know from gps and and that but it's about stripping that all those numbers down to it might be three lines are we on track or not on track yeah Yeah. because that's what a coach wants to know are we on track or not on track that's my job that's our our job as a high performance department that's it you know that's our job to give him what he needs so his tactics can come alive interesting mate it's it's obviously 
everybody who starts off at uni doing sports science or mm. even like people who've gone through their cert fours and fitness to play fitness and work their way up through the bodies to do S and C stuff want to work in this capacity. Like what type of pathway would you give to a young person coming up with the theory if you look back and said, I want you to think about where you're going now and what went to your game. So what are the things from a, a young student side coming through? Well, well, I'll take that a step back first. I, you know, I'm always about, okay, first plan for what your perfect day is. And sometimes they mightn't match up. Every Everyone likes the idea of working in professional sport. However, they don't know really what that entails. Yeah, exactly. It's- and I think that's what I say to students first off. Okay, how do you want to live your life? Now, if you want to live your life being at home on weekends and and having time with your family and not working on Christmas Day or working whenever you want and not having to travel and working nine to five. Well, and then, but you're still telling me you want to work in professional sport. Those two are not going to really meet. Okay, yep. And so long-term, that's going to be a problem. Also, if you want to earn enormous amounts of money uh, and that's your primary motive, and I hope it's not, then maybe professional sport is a long burn isn't it? It's a, it's a slow one that it takes time to build that up. And there's a lot of times that you've got to do a lot of work uh, in internships, unpaid roles. So you you further your your career that way. So I think we once we get that out of the way, you're definitely having the, the science background is, is important. So you do understand what you're what you're dealing with. However, having good internships, good mentorships are really key, but it has to be good. You have to make sure that you're choosing the right place. Don't go to the local professional team just because you think, oh, that's cool and I yeah. want the tracksuit. I'm very happy for you to write to me now. I've got a lot of tracksuits. <laughs> that's gold. So, so that's not what we want to do. Yeah. Okay. You want to learn from people that are going to teach you the right way. And then you want to develop your own philosophy. Uh, we've uh, look, and that's probably the part I want to touch on with what wins you a game like that. Yeah, that because I mean, you still lecture. You've actually developed some courses. Yeah, at the uh, ACU we have the Masters in High Performance Sport that I was involved in, and a graduate diploma in Performance Analysis, and there've been successful courses. And I still, uh, I do still teach a third year. You get twenty eight hours in a day, don't you? So what I'm trying to say here, how much of those courses is related to this noise and the, the well being word you don't like and all that? Yeah, are, are, are we putting a lot of time into these experts coming through that look I, th- run yeah. this co- I mean obviously that's your specialty that's what you, you stand yeah. out on is but are we training the next generation to come through about this to be more people minded look I, I definitely think ACU has, has done a good job in in trying to direct things yep. that way however you will always need to be out in the industry learning and you will learn more mm-hmm. and it depends what your niche is most people go through sports science courses and I know I was one you, you want to make people run faster lift more weights yeah. and and be better at sport and and they they want to do that on field component that's the excitement the in the gym area and then so so we've got those people and then we've got ones that they find okay I want to do the sport science like the you know the GPS the analysis process and so you've got to find your niche inside where you think your strengths are and it gets back to what I say what does your day look like and then work work from there so that, so that's important I think a combined study with good mentorship in the field is is the best way to go. Don't think you're going to going to be really that successful just going to university and and working in and not working in the industry. I think that's the most important thing you can do as early as possible. And I'm always open to internships. I'm always advertising them. And when do you advertise an internship for someone who's interested? Well, you can you can contact me directly, but we have Brisbane Raw as a is a client of ours, and so we've advertised for internships there. Manly is always looking for interns. Any of our clients will always be looking for them and they're good internships so there is some you know there is some pushback against unpaid internships and i agree with that if it's just unpaid labor where you're not learning Absolutely, yeah. but if it's a win-win situation and in in a positive environment where you are going to learn i can't recommend that higher so how do people contact you just contact me directly through social media at dr craig duncan or my email that's one word at dr craig duncan dr yeah dr yep, yep. at dr c-r-a-i-g d-u-n-c-a-n yeah internships are available people get on board <laughs> <laughs> hey get ready for some dms yeah you've probably got to follow him first if you really want to yeah, get one yeah. Yeah, just write out there he's trying to build his profile up a bit <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking when I say that. Yeah. But I love your Instagram, actually. It's, you know, I love 
the information you put across. Look, closing, let's shut this down. What wins you a game? You've talked about understanding people, understanding the coach, mm-hmm. understanding the systems and the process. You've, you've got to put it, you know what wins yep. you a game? Having it all integrated, having a holistic view of it, yep. even from the point of view, having good supplement supplier. You know, having Great the, answer. Great yeah, answer. Well, but Nathan, having, I like that But answer. having the nutrition right. Yep. You know, having having the sports medicine right. Yep. Having the coaching right. It has to be integrated and has to work together as a as a team to get the best out of your players. And that's what wins games. And that's what wins games. And always, there's too much in sport. There's too much ego in sport. And that's okay. We all come to that. Yep. That's probably why we're involved. It's leaving the ego at the door to get the best outcome possible uh, with, the, with the players that you have. That's what you've got to do. Work together. Integrate all the data. Offer insight from the data. And, and really... That's that's what I think is the most important thing. I love it. Well, you've had it from the expert himself. And if you're looking for an intern, drop him a DM. <laughs> yes. Dr. Craig Duncan, thanks for coming on, mate. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. Today's podcast was brought to you by our partners in Fit, Happy and Healthy, ASN, Nutrition Warehouse, DY Discount Vitamins, Fat Burners Only, Evelyn Fay, Mr. Supplement, or find a retailer online at bodyscience.com.au forward slash retailers.